What's going on, everybody? This is Nick Lawson from Squad Sports. We're really excited to be supporting the Free Agent Friday series. A lot of great talent out there. Without further ado, this is the next free agent you should be signing with your sports team. All right, we're back for another Free Agent Friday. And today I've got Andy Friedlander with me. Thanks for joining me, Andy. Thank you for having me. So, Andy, start off. Um, let us know where you went to school, what your degree is in. Let's see. Um... I went to the University of Miami and my degree is in communications with a minor in sports management. So you can't go wrong there, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so at what point were you interested in getting in the sports business? I probably, I started in high school when I realized I was never going to play professional baseball. <laughs> and figured I had to do something else. And at that point, my goal was always to be the GM of a major league baseball team. Oh, nice. Pretty, a pretty lofty goal, but. Yeah. Hey, listen, mine is, mine's up there too. Mine's to be the president of a major league team. So can happen, man. Uh, so tell me about like, you know, when you were in school, did you have any sports internships or when did you first get involved on the sports scene? I didn't. It wasn't until probably several years after I graduated college. After college, I worked for a company in Dallas called Beckett Media. They do all the sports collectible magazines, trade shows, card grading. I was with them for about six and a half years, and then the company was sold. And then I was out of work for a while. And that's when Hurricane Katrina happened. And a friend of mine knew the director of Ticket Ops for the New Orleans Hornets. And once they relocated to Oklahoma City, they needed, they needed all the help they can get. And he said, how soon can you be there? And I was there the very next day. Oh, wow. <laughs> Talk about, yeah, I'll be there real quick. How um, long of a drive was that for you? It was from Dallas. It was about three and a half, four hours. Okay. It's not too bad, but still to be there the next day, that's impressive. It was. I just, I just tossed pretty much all my clothes into my car, left my apartment, and moved into the hotel room they put me up in. So what kind of stuff were you doing with the Hornets there? When I first started with the Hornets, it was basic ticket off stuff. A lot of it was calling season ticket holders with their different options for the season, whether it be refund, keep their money. And a lot of it was difficult calls because I was talking to people who had lost everything in Katrina. And I grew up in New Orleans, so it definitely had an effect on me as well because the area where I grew up in did flood as well. So hearing their stories, I felt more of a connection with them that I was able to talk to them better than maybe somebody else might not have been. But while I was there, pretty much, I think there was probably at least 100 employees from the NBA there helping out. Wow. So I got in it. They were located in a different office building than we were. But I got to meet a lot of them and make some connections. And after that temporary position ended, eventually I turned that into my first full-time job in sports in Chicago with the Chicago Sky of the WNBA. Okay. Similar type of role there with them? Oh, so there I was in charge of all the ticket ops. I was building the plans, price codes, printing tickets. I was, I had a one intern, but I was pretty much a one man ticket ops department doing everything, <laughs> in, doing, doing everything in ticket ops you can think of. Nice. That makes it fun sometimes. It was, so. I mean, it was, it was, summer, it was summer in Chicago. So it was a lot of indoor late nights and late hours. Right. It was a really great experience for me. 
So then after the Chicago Sky, you went to the Florida Panthers? I did. I, it was kind of another similar situation. They were going through some changes, and I was only supposed to work for them on a part-time basis. And after the second day, one of the managers said to me, we need to hire you full-time, so just stay tuned. <laughs> that, that first day, they were going through season ticket renewals, and they had a game that night. And he had asked me if I'd ever processed renewals before. And I said, sure. And there was a stack a mile high on his desk. And when he got, by the, by the time he got back down to his office, the stack was halfway done. So. Yeah, that a, speaks for itself. <laughs> I made a pretty good impression the first night. So how did your role grow with them during the time that you were there? There I started out as coordinator. I was coordinator for, a year, eventually, after a year, I moved into a manager of Ticket Ops role, and then eventually a senior manager. My first time there, I was there about six and a half years. I was in charge of building price codes, plans, doing all the VIP requests for ownership, the executive staff. Eventually, I did all the player orders for the home team, for the Panthers, and for the visiting team as well. So I did a lot of little things. On game days, I managed the box office and will call for any will call issues or season ticket holder issues that may have come up. What um, type of ticketing systems have you worked with? Just Artix and Ticketmaster host. Okay. Throughout your, even with some of the other teams outside of the Panthers? Yeah. Everywhere Pretty much the same. Every, okay. Everywhere I've been, it's always, they've always been a Ticketmaster client. Have you worked with any other um, software technology companies on the ticketing side? As far as I know, like some teams use Fivo or uh, Groupmatics or some other things like that. I did um, when I was with, the Coyotes in Arizona, I did some work with Spinzo. Okay. So on the back end in Artix, I've done work for Fivo, Groupmatics, and Experience. And then, so yeah, after the, the first run with the Panthers, you were with the Devils for a little bit, and the Coyotes kind of looks like similar roles. Yeah, they were all pretty similar roles. When I went to New Jersey, it was – the VP of ticket sales who I had worked with in Chicago when I was with the Panthers, he was trying to recruit me for a little while at the time. I didn't want to make a move, but eventually I did. And I went up to New Jersey. I had never been to New York, much less lived in New Jersey. <laughs> it's a whole other world. Let me tell you. <laughs> it, it, was, it was, it was definitely, it was definitely a big culture shock. But everywhere I've been, it's always been a good learning experience. I've always worked with great people who are talented, and I've definitely made some friends along the way. So what brought you back then to the Panthers this last time? When I was with um, the Coyotes, my mom got sick, and being pretty much across the country was very difficult on me. And I enjoyed the people that I worked with in Arizona, just professionally and personally, it wasn't the best fit. And then eventually I had a chance to come back to South Florida and come back to the Panthers, which was probably one of the best days of my career when I came back. And it's pretty much same role manager and then senior manager of Ticket Ops. Yeah, it's always been with the exception of a little bit of concert work the first time with the Panthers, it's always been strictly on the hockey side in Arctic and a little bit of host. Are you a, um, is it like hockey your favorite sport or did you just happen to get into the NHL and that kind of happened to be where your career went? Football has always been my favorite sport. And then when I was living in Dallas, in my late teens, early 20s, 
that's when the stars relocated there from Minnesota and I really got into hockey and liked it a lot. And then eventually, once I left the WNBA and went to the Panthers, it just so happened that all the opportunities that came up were with NHL teams. So what is kind of your ideal position that you're looking for now? If I'm going to stay in sports, I'd like to maybe try something else. I think I've done everything that I can pretty much do in ticket ops. I've always been interested in the sponsorship and active activation side. I've always been kind of any game that I go to or watch on TV, whether it be hockey or baseball or football, I always take notice of the sponsorship signs, the boards in hockey, the outfield wall in baseball. I really like in baseball looking at some of the old photos from the 20s and 30s of all the old sponsors. Those old signs. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. I think the one is the Gem Razor. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some. I was just looking at that because I, I, I'm in baseball now for the first time uh, with minor league team in, in Virginia here. So, um, yeah, I was looking at some of those old photos and, you know, the even the cigarette ads out there back then. Yeah, um, it's crazy to think about that. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. about um, location? Are you open to relocating or does it, do you need to be in South Florida? I would prefer to stay in South Florida if I were to move at this point. There's really only two cities I would go to possibly, one of them being Los Angeles because my sister and niece are there and I have some friends there. And the only other one I would maybe think about would be New Orleans because I grew up there and just because I love the city so much. Very nice. What, um, you know, are I, your... T I've, I've just done the thing where I moved to strange cities where I don't know anybody. And I think I'm, I may be past that point unless the right, the absolute right offer came along. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Where, what do you think are your biggest assets that you'll bring to the next position? I think my biggest one is teamwork. That is something that's always been very important to me. When I worked for Beckett in Dallas on my annual on my annual review, my boss gave me a perfect score on teamwork. And he said that I was the only employee that he ever did that for. Nice. Another one, I think I'm really I'm very big on loyalty and dedication as well. Very good. What do you think is the area that you need to work on the most? I think the area that I need to work on is something that I've always probably had a hard time learning is that sometimes I tend to take on too much. I need to learn to delegate more rather than trying to do everything by myself. And I need to learn to trust others that they will do the work and get the job done. The one thing is when I had, when I was with the sky in Chicago, both seasons, my interns have gone on to careers and ticket ops and are still in ticket ops as well. So that's something that I'm always proud of that I helped them along the way to get a start in their careers. And it's something that they're still doing today. Yeah, no, that's very cool. How about a fun fact about you? My fun fact? Yeah, give us a fun one. I have a, is that I'm really a kind of shy. And I, at times I can be a, a little bit socially awkward. But I did try out for a few reality shows and did go on a few casting calls. Did you? Well, tell us about what shows you tried out for. I went to, um, I went to a casting call for Fear Factor when it was really popular. And I went to one. How'd you, how'd you, how'd you do on that? Did you have yeah. to like eat anything crazy or? No, I didn't really get a chance to. It was, um, 
it was starting, it was supposed to start at 10 o'clock in the morning in downtown Dallas. So I got up really early around 4.30 in, in the morning and I, I got in line at 5.30 and I was probably the third, I was probably the third or fourth person in line. And once they opened up and then there was hundreds of people in line and they put us in groups at, at a restaurant at these tables and at the table I was with, I was pretty much with a bunch of models. So I know I, who had, who had very, who, and who had very A type personalities. So Hi. I didn't have too much chance. <laughs> I also went on one for the real world and that didn't go so well, but it was something that I can always say that I tried. Yeah. I think that's really cool that you, you know, went out there. I don't know about fear factor though, man. They were eating some crazy stuff, putting spiders on you. Like yeah, I couldn't do I, that. <laughs> when I told my, you know, when I called my, when I called my mom and told her, she was like, you did what you, <laughs> are you really going to eat that? You know, me who is sometimes afraid of heights. I'm yeah. like, well, you never know. You know, I, I wanted to do something that was going to put me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I think you really got to do that sometimes. And for me, doing these podcasts are out of my comfort zone. And it's like, it's taken me a little while to get comfortable with it because it's not something I've ever done. Um, I've done interviews and stuff like, you know, being interviewed, but I've never um, kind of led something like this. So it's, it's kind of pushed me and it's, it's kind of good because I'm getting to meet, you know, some cool people, you know, I mean, your background is awesome on the um, sports, sports world. I mean, I, my role, I'm over um, partnerships, ticket sales, and the box office with our minor league baseball team here. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm a, a ticket expert, that's for sure. And we use tickets.com, and it can be frustrating at times. So, I've heard, yeah, I've heard, I've heard good and bad about tickets.com. I've always wanted to see the interface and what it looks like, but I've never had the opportunity to. Yeah, I like Artix though. Um, I've used that before, but uh, Artix is once you learn it. I mean, I think you can always learn something new, but once you learn the basics, it's pretty easy. And that was something that I kind of, in a way, taught myself just by kind of playing around the, with the training database and trying and learning different things. Well, Andy, we could talk all day because you got some great background, yeah. but yeah, I don't, need to keep don't, these. Don't that, but yeah, but uh, no, I really appreciate you coming on, man. You you do. You've got uh, some great experience. I'm sure you're going to find something here pretty soon. So um, keep in touch and hopefully, you. you know, we can help you uh, connect with some people as well. So thanks again for coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and stay safe.